guys, as you saw from the title, I am replacing my Thetford plastic RV toilet with a new porcelain Dometic toilet today. I'm first just going to apologize to all the men out there watching. If your wife or significant other is nearby with an earshot or is also watching this video next to you, I do apologize because by the end of this video, she may make you replace your toilet as well. I'm sorry for that, but but in but in my defense, I think that we're, you're all going to like it just as much as I do because this is a, an easy, I hope, an easy upgrade, and it is a major upgrade if you are full-timing in an RV. So this is the toilet I currently have in my RV right now. It's actually a very common, popular toilet for some reason. Uh, all plastic, cheaply constructed. It's called the Thetford. I'll bet many of my viewers are actually looking at this right now like, wow, I have the same toilet. It's got the foot lever on the bottom. That's how you flush it. Uh, half down uh, fills it with water. All the way down flushes the toilet. Uh, there is a model that has a thing on the back right here, which is really unpleasant to flush because your face has to be right here next to the toilet to reach back here and flush it. But this is a all plastic toilet. And let me talk about some of the problems here. First of all, this is my floor here in the bathroom. And as you can see, we get to the toilet. And what do you know? I have an eight inch uh, step here that makes the toilet even higher. Not to mention the fact that whoever replaced the original toilet decided to put in a high rise 18 inch toilet. As it turns out, these high-rise toilets are really popular among RVers because most of the ones that you get, they're really low to the ground. So they upgrade their first toilet to a high-rise toilet so that they're not bending down as far. But here's the problem. As I mentioned with this lip right here, that all that raises it even higher, seven to eight inches off the ground, plus the high-rise toilet, when I sit on the toilet, my feet can't even touch the ground. It's comical, really. I mean, there's really no way to do it. If I put my feet all the way back like this, sometimes it works. But what I end up doing most of the time is it just kind of forces me to basically lean forward with my tippy toes on the ground. I know it seems ridiculous. If you're a six foot five person, you might not have this problem. But this is a terrible system in this RV. It's the worst combination possible. It's really uncomfortable. See, Jax doesn't even like this toilet. Do you like this toilet? You know, you know, you don't. Don't, don't lie to the camera. You don't like this toilet. There you go. Get off it. There you go. Not to mention, okay, look, this is all cheap plastic. Look at how much this bends. It just, it feels cheap. It is cheap. All these little corners and crevices are really, really hard to clean because it's just got like hidden stuff where. You know, it's just really difficult to clean. All these little edges and all these little stuff gets dirty so often. Uh, I've had lots of problems with the gasket down there. For some reason, that gasket, I replace it like every two months, even though I put chemicals on it to treat the gasket. I literally get two months out of that gasket, which is ridiculous. Uh, the water. So as far as flushing it, after you're done using the toilet, there is only one spot the water comes out and all it does is just go in a circle here until I guess it's supposed to clean the bowl, but it really does a terrible job. Again, cleaning back through here. It's just stupid. And the whole toilet is just cheap and chinzy and it feels like you're going to break it every time you use it. Now let me be clear here, if you bought a $50,000 RV and you only use it one weekend out of the year, a plastic toilet like this is probably going to be okay. But again, like many of the other things that I have repaired or upgraded inside my RV, I do it because I'm a full-time RVer. I live in this RV and I use it 100% of the time. Plastic is just not working for me. Not to mention, here's the toilet that I got. So this is the new toilet. Well, this is the box that comes in. Uh, pretty generic, just says Dometic. I got it on Amazon. I got the low profile version of the ceramic toilet. Pretty cool. Up top looks totally different. The water comes through at an angle around here to flush. As well as this option also comes with the sprayer hose here to attach to the wall. Uh, that way you could reach in here and even spray the inside in here. But this thing is durable and looks awesome. I am noticing one problem right off the start though. And that is the location for the input of the half inch water hose being right here on the very bottom of the toilet 
and it's at a completely different angle as well because mine on the old one is way up here at the top and it shoots down like this and wants to hook up right here. So that is going to be an issue, uh, but the first step basically is going to be to analyze what I'm working with. So we'll go back into the bathroom here and start taking apart the toilet. Ooh, it's warm. I got the fans on in here as I'm going to be doing this project and this is probably going to get a little dirty. I want to talk about a couple quick things real quick though. First of all, the box, it says right on the box, easy install, five minutes. Absolute lie. <laughs> I'm sorry. It never works that way. I will also say that I have attempted this project before and failed and had to seek professional help with the toilet and I think today I'm going to do my absolute best to get this done all by myself. But first of all, it's probably really important to understand that we are going to open up the tank. It's going to be wide open. It's going to smell a lot. So I emptied my tank two days ago. Best I can do. It is not empty, but in a perfect world, if you had a chance to empty your black tank and rinse it out completely, thoroughly clean it, Granted, you're still going to smell it during this process. No matter how quick you are, you're still going to smell it no matter what. But you can save yourself some hassle by at least trying to have that tank emptied and sanitized and smelling as good as it's ever been before you start this. Also, close all of your windows, turn off all of your fans, ceiling fans and everything, because the way the toilet works is it goes up a valve and then the smell normally goes up on the roof through one of your vents. Well, having a vent open or something else open is going to turn that path of least resistance and come right up even more so and fill the whole RV. But either way, as I remember, it's just gonna smell bad. So be thankful you're on that, that side of the camera while I'm working over here. Let's take a look at my toilet here. I will start here by turning off the water pump. Now I'm just holding down the valve to get all of the water out of here to make sure the line is as empty as possible. It already smells in here, believe me. It looks like the previous installer decided to put some goop, some silicone around the base here. Usually that is not required. I'm not going to be doing that, but that is going to make it a little trickier to get the toilet out. But there are two bolts that have to come off. They should be at basically uh, 9 o'clock and 3 o'clock here on the toilet. So you'll remove these caps to get what looks like half inch. I'm going to guess half inch. We'll see. I will unbolt both of those. Alright, so we'll take off these nuts. Once the two bolts are off, here's the water connection. It's just going to be hand tight. So I will unloosen that, but I need two hands to do it. We'll release the water and then we'll see. Alright, now with both nuts removed, technically all you would normally have to do is lift the toilet up and you're going to have access directly to the black tank underneath. But in this circumstance, it's going to be a little tricky. I may have to get a knife and carve off some of this silicone or really rip at it in order to get mine free. But as soon as I get the toilet up and removed, I'm going to use my crock pot lid, which is concave a little bit, and I'm going to use it to put it down over the flange to try to keep the smell from getting throughout the RV. All right, toilet is removed and actually it does not smell as bad as last time, but I got the crock pot lid over it and that is really helping with the smell. See that water line right there? See how it comes up to hook up about 12 inches off the floor? And how flexible is it? It is not flexible at all. That's our problem. Well, I'm gonna be honest with you guys. This is quickly turning into a do not do what Eric is doing project. Every time I do a project, Here's the problem, if, if, if obviously I need to clean this all up before I install the toilet, but I'm just showing you from where the bolts are in the middle of the flange to the center of the hose back here is five and a half inches. Five and a half inches. Let me go outside and show you. Now on the new toilet, from the center of the bolt to the end of the spout right here is eight and a half inches. Five and a half would put the hose coming out of the ground right here. Obviously, I cannot just put in a 90 degree angle right there. We still have to go out this way. And the other thing I had to calculate was this uh, actually goes farther back. So from the center of this to the farthest back part of the toilet is 10 and a half inches. We'll go measure that. So 10 and a half is right there. There's where the bolt's going to go. You could not cut that any shorter. In fact, the back of the toilet is going to probably touch the back of the wall. But the fittings here, I need to get this to come back out and do something squiggly in order to come in and hook this way into the bottom of the, or way back here 
into the bottom of the new toilet. So, five minutes, my ass. All right, so luckily uh, Steve here took me down to the local RV spot down there, and we got some stuff to make this work. Uh, Half-inch female to PEX male adapter here. Got three feet of PEX to be able to bend it back to where it's got to go. This is basically going to be a Frankenstein job here, though. Unfortunately, it was not as easy as promised, but if we got lucky here, maybe we got the right parts to uh, finish this project now. So I'll start inside and measure everything up. Uh, this toilet also comes with a new gasket as well, so hopefully they all do. I would not reuse the same old one. Okay, so going back to what we're changing here from the existing toilet, got a half inch to half inch male coupler going into the existing line here and this female adapter, which is gonna give us the apex half inch, well, it's not a half inch inner, but that's gonna be for apex, which is now gonna go down here, bend and connect into the new toilet down here. Uh, before I go any farther though, I'm gonna clean the surface here. All right, got the surface all cleaned up here now and underneath here, I have not removed the old rubber gasket yet. That's because uh, actually Mike showed me how to put a solo cup in there, which fits perfectly and I actually don't even really need the lid anymore. So for right now, it's actually staying really not smelly in here right now. Well, let's go out to the toilet and uh, take a look. So we're getting ready to prep it and bring this in. Again, all of these are uh, gonna be hand tight on there. With the pecs here, this is gonna get bent. We're gonna keep it whole, it's a three foot section. Line it up in there where it's going to mount and then we'll cut it and attach it to where it's gonna go. Well, thankfully, uh, Pedro there had a ratcheting half inch. That's how I was able to get the toilet flush down on the floor right now. So we're good. Do not need to silicone this up like it was last time. That's the gasket will hold the smells just fine. The last step is going to be hooking up the water. And as you can see, that's where I got to get to. And my input for the toilet, I'm not sure if you can see it, but it's down at the bottom. That's going to be the tricky part. Uh, but this is gonna be hooked into the toilet here like that and then there's got to be enough bend on this as you can see how tall it is um, once I snap that ring I'm not gonna be able to rotate this so the whole thing has to bend into the corner over here and then get back up and attach to right there you can see a lot of bending required I cannot do this while holding the camera so I will get back to you when I have hopefully successfully figured this out. All right, so an update. I changed my mind. <laughs> Running it this way back into this corner right here. Uh, since the spout's on that side, it was actually more convenient to do it on the other side. So there's where it does its little loop-de-loop loop around. There you see, connected there. I haven't crimped this yet, getting ready to right now though. But that's there, Pex bends around and uh, comes in right here. And I just gotta do this last crimp as well. Got these bad boys crimped on that side. Down there, should be good to go. All my connections are tight. We're getting close here. I guess the last step here is to test for leaks. Oh boy. So we'll turn the water pump back on, pressurize the system here. Then we'll go back to the toilet and feel around, make sure that none of these fittings are leaking anywhere. Even the ones that we didn't touch that were already connected. It's all dry. Everything in here is dry. Uh, I'm still gonna keep my eye on it, probably for the next 12 to 24 hours, just to make sure it doesn't develop a leak anywhere, but man, I think we're golden. Let's give it a test out here and see how we do. Look at that. Oh my gosh, how cool is that? Uh, you do want to make sure that this is going to hold water as well. Um, it pretty much guarantees that once it's out of the box, the gasket's going to be good, but you will need to keep maintenance up on that. I haven't mounted the sprayer yet. Uh, I'm not sure where exactly that's going to go, but try that out. Nothing. That's good to know. The sprayer only works when you're holding down the pump. I did not know that. <laughs> thought maybe I had a problem there. Man, that's awesome. Sweet. Oh, so fancy. Woo! Woo! So I can't call this a fail. Eventually, we got her working. I will say this, as advertised, it is not a five minute job. Unless you had that same exact toilet with the same exact plumbing configuration, you certainly do not have the parts 
to make the upgrade, uh, to make a clean swap for a 310 to a 310, sure, yeah. Um, but basically what I did is I just brought the parts in to the store, told them what I was trying to do, and they helped me get her going. And actually, Ben helped me a lot. He was, you know, drove me there and got me all the parts I needed, so. <laughs> now, if I had to guess, I would say we probably brought the toilet down four to five inches. Might not make that much difference, but perfect. Perfect. Hey guys, this is Jax, my kitty cat. I'm his servant, Eric. Thanks for watching our YouTube channel here on RVing. If you like the video, give us a thumbs up below. Make sure you subscribe, check out all our other videos, and keep following us on the road. Thanks, guys.